Okay, Redmond versus City of Oberlin Park. Uh, in the in the case of Redmond, the court uh, the court concluded the court must weigh the department's legitimate interest in determining the plaintiff's fitness to serve as a police officer and the plaintiff's narrow interest in preventing disclosure of the personal information. The court finds that overwhelming evidence has been presented which shows that the municipality's interest in ensuring that the plaintiff was capable of performing her duties substantially outweighed the privacy interest the plaintiff had in the information in question. This was, though, a plaintiff uh, for a injured party who then wanted the fitness for duty evaluation records. Not, not the officers or examinees uh, access, but another plaintiff in a civil case. And Pettus v. Cole, we've already talked about that. We know that the legislature has restricted the information that may be disclosed without authorization to only that which is necessary to achieve a legitimate purpose, and that's the disclosure of functional limitations. In McGrill versus Ostroff, a court held that in each instance where disclosure of mental health records is allowed under the Confidenti Confidentiality Act, the legislature has been careful to restrict disclosure to that which is necessary to, to accomplish a particular purpose. So throughout a fitness for duty report, I'm always asking myself, is this necessary? Is this private information necessary to disclose? There is a balancing act uh, in trying to reach that, and I'll, I'll speak about it in a moment. The court in Pettus v. Cole also went on to say there is no reason in law or policy why an employer should be allowed access to detailed family or medical histories of its employees or to the intricacies of its employees' mental processes, except with the individual's freely given consent to the particular disclosure or treating psychologist who says, absolutely fit for duty and then gives a detailed recitation of their clinical evidence supporting that, how, are you, how is your opinion going to stack up against that detailed clinical opinion? So Slater versus Homeland Security, federal case, inciting Lassiter, the court says, in assessing the probative weight, that is that, that weight which carries value to a court, in assessing the probative weight of medical opinion, the board considers whether the opinion was based upon a medical examination, whether the opinion provided a reasoned explanation for its findings as, as distinct from mere conclusory assertions, the qualifications of the expert rendering the opinion, and the extent and duration of the expert's familiarity with the treatment of the, app, of the appellant. This is the argument here for obtaining treatment information. It is relevant. I absolutely agree that the treating health care provider's opinion is a, plays a relevant role in a fitness for, fitness for duty evaluation. I don't agree that it's determinative. They play an advocacy role as they should. It is an important element of it. But when you simply say unfit, it is a mere conclusory opinion, and in a federal model, it is not going to be given the weight of, e of an opposing opinion that is descriptive. And in the case of McGrill versus Ostroff, the court said the defendants were not entitled to disclosure of anything other than the fitness for duty determination. They were not entitled under any Illinois law to force the disclosure of the intimate and the irrelevant details of McGrill's home life. Now, if, if it does. If I was practicing in Illinois, I would provide a fit or unfit finding. If I practiced in California, I might initially provide a fit or unfit finding. And I would simply say that I acknowledge that this is a mere conclusory assertion under that I've done so under a, my reading of Pettus v. Cole. 